targeting the financial sector, transport sector, uh, certain visas, uh, certain individuals. And there's also a uh, mention of Belarus as, the, as well, because we know that the Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko said he is in support of whatever Russia is doing in the area. Now, Shona, the signs were there from the Russian President Vladimir Putin about his intentions um, about Ukraine. The US and NATO, they're all warning about a possible invasion for weeks. Why did Europe not seem to believe or react fast enough? I think everybody believed that uh, an invasion was likely or possible. But as many EU leaders have said, including Emmanuel Macron of France, as long as Vladimir Putin is talking, war isn't happening. And so the, every side in the West, whether it was the US or EU leaders, or the institutions in the EU, or the various other uh, multilateral sections where there was discussions uh, with Russia, hoped that diplomatic efforts could prevail because nobody wants armed conflict. As we know, NATO is not even going to engage from a combat perspective in Ukraine. And nobody wants to see what we've seen over the past few hours in Ukraine. Um, so. Uh, I don't think anyone didn't believe, but at the same time, I have to say there was still a lot of shock this morning here in Brussels and I think globally uh, at just what happened and just what ensued uh, pre-dawn from Vladimir Putin's uh, Russian army. OK, Sean and Murray, thank you for that update on that emergency EU leader summit from Brussels. Thank you so much. European nations are showing a united front in support of Ukraine. Now in the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson had strong words for Vladimir Putin, repeating that the Russian president must not be allowed to succeed. Now we see him for what he is, a blood-stained aggressor who believes in imperial conquest. Now we have a clear mission, diplomatically, politically, economically, and eventually, militarily, this hideous and barbarous venture of Vladimir Putin must end in failure. Now, during a national address, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz condemned Russia's invasion, calling it the worst conflict in Europe since World War II. This is an attempt to forcibly shift borders within Europe, perhaps even to wipe an entire country off the world map. We must ensure that this conflict does not spill over to other European nations. I am in agreement with the American president and our European friends that we must prevent this with everything at our disposal. And from Berlin, Kate Brady told us that Chancellor Schultz is determined for united Western response. Uh, well, of course, uh, the first step now is for this new draft of, uh, of EU sanctions that we're expecting to uh, have confirmed uh, at least this evening anyway. And so it seems right now that Schultz is still very much keen to take a united response with Western allies, with uh, European, other EU nations and, of course, NATO allies as well. Uh, but as we know, sorry, the wind's picking up a little bit here in Berlin this evening. Um, as we know, um, the NATO... Um, there are preparatory measures now um, underway uh, for potential uh, deployment of uh, NATO uh, response forces. And of course, Germany uh, does in fact lead the NATO task force in Lithuania right now. There's about 950 uh, Bundeswehr troops there, member troops from Germany's uh, military. And, uh, and so we heard earlier today from Germany's defense minister as well, uh, saying that the Bundeswehr, Germany's military, is now on uh, national alert. But of course, that would be um, a united response with NATO allies. Uh, what still seems to be off the table, however, is Germany potentially sending any uh, kind of defensive weapons uh, to Ukraine. And that debate is rumbling again at the moment. And there is going to be a special session uh, of parliament here on Sunday. And that is going to be, um, of course, uh, debated in the Bundestag this week. Uh, and we're also expecting to see another speech as well uh, from Olaf Scholz himself on Sunday. Day. And Kate, we do, of course, appreciate you for um, defying the weather there. Um, let's go back to what uh, Schultz said then. So he's called this the worst conflict in Europe since World War II. Is that kind of language then quite worrying for Germans? Why do you think he's using that kind of language? Well, of course, that resonates.